Hello, today I'd like to talk to you about making holes. Well that's a funny thing to do, I can see that that's probably not the normal sort of thing you do, but here I've made a hole in my fabric. You can see that it's a hole because I've put my hand through it. And you can make all sorts of different shaped holes and I'm not really sure whether you even want to make holes, but holes are quite good when you're trying to do some decorative stuff, like I've laid it um, on to something um, like an, well, a red fabric here. You could have all sorts of other things poking out behind the holes. They could be for little pockets, all sorts of things. So I, I thought today I'd show you how to do that. It's something that's a little bit more creative perhaps. Uh, so I'm going to just show you on, on a piece of fabric that I've got here how to put a few holes in. And I've just taken a strip of fabric, the full width of the fabric, and it's about 12 and a half inches wide. I thought maybe I could make it into a table runner or a panel in a quilt haven't quite decided yet. Um, so it's just a strip of fabric, full width of the fabric, and then I'm going to put five holes along my strip, and I need to be able to draw my holes, so I need to have some squares. Now what I've done with this green piece here is it's actually the same both sides at the moment, and there's two layers of fabric there, and that hole is in the middle there. Um, you wouldn't necessarily need to have two full pieces so that your underside piece doesn't have to be as large because if it's in a quilt or something you probably will have quilted around here so you could actually trim away some of that. So I'm going to actually uh, line my hole with the same fabric as the piece that I've cut there. So a little bit of maths re required because I want to put five pieces. So I would find the center of my piece and I know that this is going to be a little bit over 40 inches wide and I know that uh, 5 times 8 is 40 so I would put some pins starting from the center I would come out another 8 inches and pop a pin and another 8 inches and then again down the other side and then I would finger press those lines just to give me something to work with and I also would finger press a line the full length of the piece of fabric folding it lengthwise in half so that I've got a line along there and I've got some other finger press lines going that way. Um, and then to, to put my shapes onto, I've got some squares of fabric. These are 8 inch squares because that's as large as I can go if I'm using an 8 inch area because of the way the fabric is sized and because I want my shapes, um, my holes to be fairly evenly placed. And now I'm just doing some different, five different shapes. I've done um, a circle and an oval and a couple of triangles and Thing. So I've actually got a couple of templates here which I can just draw around. It's not particularly important to have an exact template. I just happen to have these on hand. You might have some other way. For the triangles that I'm doing, I just drew them with my ruler. I didn't have anything in particular. It's not so easy to trace through if you've got a dark fabric, that's all. So you just need some way of getting the shape, that you, the, the whole shape, onto the back of these squares. So these are extra squares to your main piece of fabric. But it's a good idea if they're the same fabric because when you make the hole you may just get a little glimpse of that on the underside of, depending on how you're going to use your holes. So I find that if I use the same fabric it probably shows less which is what I was after at this stage. And um, so I'll quickly, I've got a little piece ready here um, to, sh to show you. So I've already done my shapes, drawn them on my squares and I've actually sewn most of them because I didn't think you needed to see me do every little aspect. So I've got a triangle and a circle and a different, slightly different shaped triangle and an oval and again another slightly different tri shaped triangle. And as I said I just used my ruler to draw the straight lines for the triangles. And what I want to do now is sew on that. So I'm going to lay my squares with the shapes on them on top of um, my background. Now when we did that finger pressing we did the, the bit down at every pin line and we did the bit going that way. If you also finger press your square so that you've got that center line in both directions, you're going to place these right sides together. If you've got a line there that you can line up with, you can line your little folds top and bottom and on the sides you'll be able to see your finger press lines going through the middle and that helps you just get it centered fairly well um, so that you know more or less where things are going. And as you can see, I've done my eight inch centers, so they're pretty much sitting just along the piece of fabric here. Um, so I'm going to put five holes in this strip of fabric. I've already sewn these four. Um, I'll just pop some pins in to hold them in place. And I'm just going to quickly
go to the sewing machine now and um, sew on that triangle line there. So just a regular straight stitch and just sew around. So you need to draw your line on with something that you can see quite well on your fabric. It's amazing how lines kind of become hard to see when you're sewing. They need to be clearly marked. So just all the way around, pivoting when you get to the point. If you've got a needle down, that always helps. This is a great fun technique. You can use this for all sorts of things. You might want to make little pockets in things. You might just want to have something poking out of a hole. You might want to pop some embroidery or something in. Some different colours behind your hole. So many things you can do with it. Okay, didn't take long. Back to the beginning. And so now I've got all my holes sewn. I can probably get rid of some of these pins now because they're definitely going to get me. Um, and we're going to cut, cut our holes out now. So just some nice sharp scissors is a really good idea. Um, and I'll just, as I said, I'll get rid of these pins because I know they're going to get me. Let's got rid of them. But they were very helpful while they were there to help mark all that positioning. And so I'll just start here with the circle. So I'm going to cut the inside area. So inside your stitching, um, maybe a quarter of an inch away, maybe just only an eighth of an inch. Don't go any less than an eighth of an inch. And you'll find that that will work quite well for you. So just cut, start to cut somewhere. You're cutting through both layers. And you just want to cut around that. As I said, approximately an eighth of an inch away from your sewing line. It uh, doesn't have to be exact, but not too. Don't leave yourself too much there because you're going to be turning this out the other way, and it'll be harder for it to sit right if there's too much. Now because it's a circle and we're going to be turning it the other way, we might just want to do some extra little snips because when you turn it out the other way, you'll find that then it needs to spread itself a little bit. So don't cut your sewing line doing this. These are just little tiny nicks in the seam area to allow it when you pull it so that you can see that it's going to spread. So you need to have those little um, cuts in there to allow that spread. So I'll just quickly pop around the here um, on straight lines you don't have to do all this this is just on the curves the corners you would have to cut into I'll show you a corner shortly okay so I've now I've snipped little snips all the way around in there and now I'm going to turn that through and this is where it's quite helpful to start with a largish piece of fabric so that you've got plenty to play with for this part and then you can trim it back if you think you don't need all that extra there so because you've done all those snips and everything you can just see how easily that just sits out so I'm just going to bring the iron over now and press that so that it sits really flat I'm actually going to press it from the right side so that I can see that nothing's showing that I don't want showing. So just sit it down nice and make sure that the back is all flat. Out of your way. So we have already got a round hole in our fabric. Okay, now I'm just going to press that. I'm just keeping an eye on it to make sure that the fabric has opened out right on the seam line that we haven't got little bits of the fabric on the back showing. Make sure everything 
sitting flat behind. Circles are great, they're quite easy to do when you've done that little snipping around that curve. They just sit really nicely. So there we have, right before your eyes, a hole in our fabric. Um, and, and on the back, it's looking great as well. And so you, if you didn't need all that extra fabric, you could trim some of that away. But as I'm not quite sure what I'm doing, I'm going to leave mine there at the moment. I'm just going to quickly do one of the triangles as well to show you what we would do if we were going into a point. So I'll just cut around, cut out this triangle quickly as well. Same thing, roughly an eighth of an inch away from your seam on the inside of the shape. You can probably see that I've got a bigger line here as well. I drew the triangle up first and it was a bit larger than I had intended, so I drew a smaller one inside. And that's because I didn't actually use a template this time, I just drew it with my ruler. Okay, so I'm just inside my sewing line. Now, the points on the triangle are a little bit harder to get to sit nicely. So what we're going to do is snip right into the sewing line, as close as you can get, but don't cut your stitching. So some little sharp scissors are quite good for this. So in each corner, snip right into the corner as close as you can get to the stitching without cutting the stitching. So the triangles have three corners, so I have to remember to do all three. If you don't do the snipping, it will simply bunch up at the corner and not turn nicely. Even with the snipping, the corners can be just a little bit tricky. So there we've got our hole, we've got clipped our corners, and now I'm going to turn that fabric through to the other side. So just pop it into the hole, turn it over and let that sit as flat as you can get it. Now, as you can see, these corners kind of want to be a little bit tricky. But we'll, again, we'll turn it over to the right side for the pressing. Now, we want our lines to stay fairly straight if we can, because that's the sort of triangle I wanted. You could do all sorts of random shapes. You don't have to stick to these sort of straight lines and traditional things like a circle. But just be aware that... Um, You'll have to do a little bit of snipping if you've got wobbly lines and things like that. So I'm just going to press the sides first and do the corners afterwards. So just make sure that it's sitting nicely here. Give it a little tug so that you can get it to fold over nicely on that seam line. Finger pressing is really helpful before you can bring the iron over. So just the main part of the straight bit at the moment and then we'll sort the corners out in a minute. It's a pretty funny idea putting holes in our quilts but you know you could have little things peeking out of these holes. It could be so much fun. straight edge again there, just press that. And now that the sides are pretty much done, we can lay that down and just see how our corners are looking. And actually, they're looking pretty good. Is that one? A little bit of encouragement from an iron. My One of my best friends is the iron, I think. Sorts all sorts of little problems in life out. You can just iron them out. So there we've got that. So here we have now got two holes in our sample. So they're sitting nicely. Plop them over and you can see Again, you can trim away all the excess when you know what you're doing with it and you know that you don't need it. We have got two lovely holes there, all ready for something to go behind them. So here I can show you all of my holes now done. Very holy piece of fabric. And on the back you can see I've still left my squares there. 
Um, I can trim them down at some stage if I want to, but just at the moment I'm going to leave them just as they are. Um, so what goes behind the holes, you wonder? So what I've done now is to make a, a I've made a strip of fabric using some different colours to go behind. Uh, so I've done this here. It's eight inches wide because I used eight inch squares. I know that everything fits within that eight inch size. And I've just joined up. So my three ones in the middle were actually squares. The two end ones I've left longer because the fabric is longer and it's just gone for the width and I can trim it down later. So I've made this nice strip of colours. The idea being that when I lay this over the top, those colours will all come through. And I'll just hold it up for you in just a minute. Just get it positioned. Hopefully it'll all behave itself. And so now you get the idea that you can place these delicious colours in behind your holes. And I just think that's exciting. I'm actually really excited by all those colours poking out of those holes. <laughs> and I'll just show you another couple of quick ideas that you might be able to do. We might actually just shift this along because I've got those joints. And you can see that you can have split colour in your holes um, as another option. That could be quite an exciting thought to have some piecing in behind the holes. You might do some embroidery, you might use it as a little frame, you might have a colour like I have, you may do all sorts of things really. And there's just one other little quick idea that I can show you with this triangle that I've got in the middle here. If I take this sample that I first showed you of the green, and if I lay that over the red as I did before, you get that nice shape. But here we've can, it happens to just be a very similar shape to this triangle that I've got here and so we can have a double layer hole there and I think that's really exciting it would really frame something um, now when you're going to apply these on you might want to stitch them down now you could just do a little straight stitch along the edge of your hole you could do a little blanket stitch you could do something more decorative you could stitch possibly if you're going to be quilting your piece you may want to stitch quarter of an inch away because the batting will allow that to sort of bounce a little bit inside the hole. Um, you may have done something decorative in there as well in the way of quilting too, but if you stitched quarter of an inch away, that would kind of just give a little bit more dimension to your work. So it just a little, depends a little bit what it is that you're hoping to do with it. But I hope that that's been helpful for making holes in fabric. Usually we're trying to cover up holes in fabric, but today we're making holes and I just think that's really a fun technique. It's a technique that I've used over the years for many things, in, particularly in dressmaking type things. You can make holes for zippers and buttons and all sorts of fun things. So that might just give you some ideas to be working with on making holes.